Good morning. These are our daily lectionary readings for Friday, February 24th, 2023. Once again, we're looking forward to what is going to be happening in church on Sunday. Psalm 51, once again, is going to be our psalm reading. We continue in the book of Jonah for our Old Testament reading. We are now going to be in Jonah chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. And then our New Testament reading is going to be from the book of Romans, chapter 1, verses 8 through 17. We are finishing up or starting where we left off as far as yesterday. Let us listen in to the scripture, and today we're going to be reading it out of the Living Bible. Psalm 51. O loving and kind God, have mercy, have pity upon me, and take away the awful stain of my transgressions. O wash me. Cleanse me from this guilt. Let me be pure again, for I admit my shameful deeds. It haunts me day and night. It is against you and you alone I have sinned, and I did this terrible thing. You saw it all, and your sentence against me is just. But I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. You deserve honesty from my heart, yes, Utter sincerity and truthfulness. Oh, give me this wisdom. Sprinkle me with the cleansing blood and I shall be clean again. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. And after you have punished me, give me back my joy again. Don't keep looking at my sins. Erase them from your sight. Create in me a new clean heart, O oh God filled with clean thoughts and right desires. Don't toss me aside, banished forever from your presence. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me again the joy of your salvation to make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to other sinners, and they, guilty like me, will repent and return to you. Don't sentence me to death, O oh my God, you alone can rescue me. Then I will sing of your forgiveness, for my lips will be unsealed. Oh, how I will praise you. You don't want penance. If you did, how gladly I would do. You aren't interested in offerings burned before you on the altar. It is a broken spirit you want, remorse and penance, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not ignore. And God, don't punish Israel for my sins. Help your people and protect Jerusalem. And when my heart is right, then you will rejoice in the good that I do and the bullocks I bring to sacrifice upon your altar. Our Old Testament reading comes from Jonah chapter 4. The change of plans made Jonah very angry. He complained to the Lord about it. This is exactly what I thought you'd do, Lord, when I was there in my own country and you first told me to come here. That's why I ran away to tarnish. For I knew you were a gracious God, merciful, slow to get angry, and full of kindness. I knew how easily you could cancel your plans for destroying these people. Please kill me, Lord. I'd rather be dead than alive when nothing that I told them happens. Then the Lord said, Is it right to be angry about this? So Jonah went out and he sat sulking on the east side of the city. And he made a leafy shelter to shade him as he waited there to see if anything would happen to the city. And when the leaves of the shelter withered in the heat, the Lord arranged for a vine to grow up quickly and spread its broad leaves over Jonah's head to shade him. This made him comfortable and very grateful. But God also prepared a worm. The next morning, the worm ate through the stem of the plant so that it withered away and died. Then, when the sun was hot, God ordered a scorching east wind to blow on Jonah. 
and the sun beat down on his head until he grew faint and wished to die. For he said, Death is better than this. And God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry because the plant died? Yes, Jonah said, It is right for me to be angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, You feel sorry for yourself when your shelter is destroyed, though you did no work to put it there. And it is, at best, short-lived. And why shouldn't I feel sorry for a great city like Nineveh with its 120,000 people in utter spiritual darkness and all its cattle? Our New Testament reading comes from the book of Romans chapter 1 verses 8 through 17. Let me say first of all that whatever or wherever I go, I hear you being talked about. For your faith in God is becoming known around the world. How I thank God through Jesus Christ for this good report in each one of you. God knows how often I pray for you. Day and night I bring you and your needs in prayer to the one I serve with all my might. Telling others the good news about his son. And one of the things I keep on praying for is the opportunity, God willing, to come at least and last to see you, and if possible, that I will have a safe trip. For I long to visit you so that I can impart to you the faith that will help your church grow strong in the Lord. Then, too, I need your help, for I want not only to share my faith with you, but to be encouraged by yours. Each of us will be a blessing to the other. I want you to know, dear brothers, that I planned to come many times before, but was prevented, so that I could work among you and see the good results, just as I have had among other Gentile churches. For I owe a great debt to you and to everyone else, both to the civilized people and the uncivilized alike, yes, to the educated and to the uneducated alike. So to the fullest extent of my ability, I am ready to come also to you in Rome to preach God's good news. For I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It is God's powerful method of bringing all who believe it to heaven. This message was preached first to the Jews alone, but now everyone is invited to come to God in the same way. This good news tells us that God made us ready for heaven, made us right in God's sight. When we put our faith and trust in Christ to save us, this is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scripture says, the man who finds life will find it through trusting God. And here ends our readings for the day.